Okay, so Steve, you're over uh, across the pond. Uh, you're covering the Jags and the Pats this week. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing the most? Well, I mean, I mean, the most. I, I want to see Drake May. Um, yeah. You know, look, he he's part of the future. He's part of this. What could really be a dynamic quarterback class. He's playing a defense that will give him opportunities to make plays in the passing game. And in watching last week's tape, you could see him get better throughout the game. I mean, he looked real jumpy, real antsy in the pocket early on. And as he settled in with some real creative play calling, by the way, I mean, I, I thought some of the play designs were fantastic. I, I could see him getting a lot more comfortable. You know, the offensive line's not – not really being a friend to him right now, but he didn't really seem to let that bother him. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, what I saw was a rookie quarterback, right? Yeah. In the, in the beginning of the game. And I think that's kind of what I expected to see. I think that a lot of New England wanted him to come out and be the Jaden Daniels of the world and, you know, come out here and, and win a football game. But I don't, I don't think this team is really built to win right now. I think everyone kind of knows that there are pieces there that this yeah. kid can be successful. Um, and I did. I like to see. I, I like to see Pop Douglas get more involved. I like to see the tight ends get involved. I think not having Ramondre last week really hurt us. Uh, you know, we rely on that run game to kind of get us going in those early downs. So if we're able to get him back, I think that kind of, that will open up some more things for us. So listen, I'm I'm excited to see how he progresses, and I think that's what we want to see. I think that's what Gerard wants to see. I think that's what the organization wants to see. So. It'll be interesting to see how he now kind of tackles this, you know, going over to London. This is a brand new thing for him. He's never done it before. Um, it's a weird week. I know they're traveling later in the week, so I think that yeah. helps them kind of stay on his routine. But, you know, a, a struggling Jacksonville de uh, team that hasn't really been playing good ball, this could be an opportunity for Drake and the Patriots to get another win, which would be – Big for him, for his confidence, for this team's confidence. Because my biggest concern is, you keep losing games, you're going to start losing the locker room. And with a new head coach, rookie head coach, rookie quarterback, you know, I don't, I don't want to see that happen this year. And then for there be too many questions after the season. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. This is a very winnable game for both teams. Yes. Well, you look at their schedule, even this game, and then I think they have one of the Jets coming up soon. But then there, there are some games, look, if, if they progress, even if they don't win this game, but they tighten some things up, right, cut out all the penalties, yeah, you know, some things like that, they, they make some little steps, they've got an opportunity to actually start stacking a couple wins. You know, yeah. the, schedule, the schedule early on when Jacoby was starting was brutal, mm -hmm. right? We all knew that coming into the season. Now you're playing Jacksonville, which when you watch tape on both these teams, they're like identical. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they can't they don't run the they don't run the football great, but they can run it effectively. They got all up and down quarterback play. They they're penalized like crazy. Yeah, and they allowed and they allow gash plays on defense. Right, they're they're just like so similar. But you know, I just do, I do think there are opportunities there. And again, watching that tape, and I, and I just cut it off a little while ago. Just some of the play designs that opened up throughout the game. And part of it because Houston was sitting back after a while. They had such a big lead that allowed some things to happen. Yeah. But, you know, you could see Drake start feeling comfortable. Some of these young players, man, I got to tell you, I love watching Mapu next to Duggar back on the back end at safety. He's like, my God. I mean, there's some pieces here you talked about that can happen. But I don't think you necessarily lose the locker room, even if, you know, losses are losses. It sucks to lose. Yeah. But if the players can see the incremental steps and, and Mayo and his staff keep it positive, right? Instead of talking about what you didn't do right, I, I mean, yeah, instead of talking about what you did incorrectly and talking about what you did correctly and building on that. And then in the offseason, they see you make pieces that justify the process you went through. I mean, that that's, that's I think, pointing in the positive direction. But, you know, those things have to fall in place as well. Yeah, you know, I listen. I'm not really concerned about this locker room being lost. I, I think we have enough young guys on this team. I think that there's a lot of energy on this team. You can see it on the defense. We have a lot of young guys. Christian's yeah. back. He's playing better. Um, again, another guy that you want to see just continue to to grow and progress because you know he's he's the future of that secondary, right? I mean, that's the guy that we want to see in New England for the next six, seven years, hopefully, but continue to be 
you know, that guy that can follow around number one receivers and be a lockdown corner. So seeing him kind of progress, seeing the young safeties continue to play with a lot of energy. I mean, that, that I'm not really concerned about. I think what will be interesting is, listen, I've, I've been there. I've been on losing teams. I've been on winning teams. It sucks losing football games and continuing to be on that end of, you know, at the end of the game. And for a guy like Drake May, I think it's going to be important for him to take steps at, you know, take being a leader of this team and this organization. I mean, that's what they're going to look for him to do. So those are the things that I'm kind of looking for. I'm like, how is he interacting with people on the sideline? How is he interacting with his teammates? What is he like throughout? I mean, obviously I'm not there throughout the week, but, you know, I would imagine that he's like overly communicating with people, offensive line, his young receivers, um, even Ben Pelt, you know, like, again, I like the play calling that he had going on early on in this game. I think that we're going to have to continue to be creative on offense to try to give some different looks to people because just lining up and playing is really, I don't think the answer with, with the pieces that we have. So I'm excited about the, you know, the, the next couple of games because they are winnable games for us. And that yeah. can change, that can change the, the environment here around, you know, what the rest of the season kind of looks like. Listen, I'm not saying that we're a playoff team, but listen, the AFC East is what it is. The Jets are the Jets. <laughs> Miami's, you know, kind of struggling, you know, with the lack of their quarterback and, you know, Buffalo is, you know, typically they're going to start playing better football come November. So, and you kind of see that Josh Allen, they just added Amari Cooper. So maybe he's got another weapon, but again, AFC East is still, we still, have, still got to play the bills twice. Still got to play the Jets in Miami again. So this is not a lost season for us. And yeah. it'll be very, very positive going forward. And obviously into the future is what I think most people are thinking about, you know, with this team. So I'm excited about it. I really am. I think this is going to be a good game for a good test for our younger guys and Drake specifically. Yeah. And, and Chris, let's not have, you know, the, you know, some revisionist history here. We all came into the season expecting the Patriots for things to play out exactly how they played yeah. out. Well, maybe right. you did. I had hopeful, <laughs> hopeful feeling. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean, here, here's, here's what I'm saying. I mean, when you look at the roster construction, right? Yeah. Draft a quarterback. You you have a lot of veteran upheaval. Um, you just knew that there was going to be some growing pains. Of course, as long as long as you're not having growing pains in week 14, or at least you know significant growing pains, the similar ones that you had in week four. Yeah. Um, because people are going to have tape on you. You know, even though there's a change in quarterbacks, they know the scheme. Yeah. They know what you're trying to do on both sides of the ball. So that's where the coaching has to grow. That's where you know execution. An attitude has to keep on building. So again, this is a real test of, of the player's character. Yeah. Um, but I but I do think, you know, maybe it's not the Patriot way, but I do think there is kind of at the moment an institutional um belief and standard. Yeah. Um that you know got guys are gonna continue to compete and practice and, and do everything they have to do in a certain way. Yeah, I mean I, I think the Patriot way is I think we can put that one to bed a little bit. Yeah. You know, this is Gerard's team now, and he's going to do things differently. And I'm not concerned about Gerard. He's He knows he's played in this league. He's been there. He's done it. He's won. And he's lost games. I know that he's going to be saying the right things to these guys to keep them motivated and, you know, high energy. And, and I think we have to use the fact that we have a, a lot of young guys on this team mm -hmm. to our advantage. You know, keep them, you know, keep them motivated. Keep telling, like you said, it's not about what you did wrong. Let's just, let's correct the things, but let's, let's really harp on the things that we did well and let's build off of those things. And again, I've talked about this too. I think a lot of this, this season and how we're going to come out each, each week and, and the weeks leading up to, you know, is heavily on the coaching staff and the organization and for them to be just as motivated because listen, it stinks having to stay in there as well until nine, ten o'clock at night, doing you know, cutting up film and doing all that when you're losing football games. But for them to do that, and for the players to see that, I think is is crucial to this to how this team is going to form over the rest of the season, and then obviously into the future. Yeah, I mean, Gerard's not one and done. I mean, he's no, he's got, no, he's, got he's, no. right, he's got a grace period. So again, this is no. I mean, granted, the losing is what it is. Yep. But the, the process of what we're seeing is not what I think is, is unexpected. 
Look, I think I think it's, it was probably more grisly the past couple of years when Coach Belichick, you know, how his tenure was winding up because you just expected it to be great because he's yeah. just the greatest coach of all time. Um, now it's 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 a reset, and this is what organizations go through in any sport or or any Fortune 500 company business when you have, you know, this type of upheaval. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, this is, this is kind of how we all expected this, this to go. Yeah. I think, you know, I think for New England, everyone was hopeful to see Drake and see him kind of be out there and, and see the, the opportunity and like what the future could be for the, for the next, yeah. you know, however many years that he is there. And I think they just want to see something positive. And I would say for the most part, for, for this season, this team is very close to a few, few plays away from having a better record than what is reflected right now. We, you know, Houston's a good team, you know, I expected them to win that Houston to win that game, but again, you know, we came out, beat Cincinnati, kind of sent them down uh, a spiral here at the beginning part of the season, and then you know we go out and a few plays here and there, you know, get a, a, a lift a heel up in a game, and and we're sitting here with two or three wins. So, you know, all not it, it, it's not as bad as it looks, and it's, it's never as bad as it looks, and it's never as good as it looks. Is you know that's. Oh, it's as bad as it looks for a couple. It's as bad as it looks for a couple teams in the NFL. I think oh, the well, I know that. Are, yeah, I think the folks at Cleveland right now will tell you it's as bad as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> well, luck, luckily we're not. I'm, I'm not in Cleveland having to cover this, you know, because that that could be trouble year in and year out. But in New England, it's definitely not as bad as it looks. I'll tell you yeah. that. So there's some there's some pieces there, and I think the future. The future is is going to be well is in good hands with Gerard and, and obviously that organization is fantastic. Having been there for a number of years, I know that Robert Kraft and all all of those guys that are going to be you know all in on trying to make this get this back to where they were you know when Tom and Bill and and all the times that they were winning football games. So. I think, listen, I think this is going to be a close game. I think you know I played over in London. It's a different experience. Early game. You know, you're, you kind of have to adjust your schedule. You're not going to be eating the same food, different, you know, different environment. Um, but the NFL does a great job. I know that you're over there right now and you get to kind of take that, you know, take that in. So I think it's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be a one score game. Um, but again, like you said, you can limit the penalties, limit, limit the turnovers. And we're going to be in this football game. It's going to be a four quarter game. I think, listen, what I've said is. I want to be a team in December that no one wants to play. And that's that's the type of team that I want these guys to kind of develop into over the next couple of weeks. It's like when the, we see New England on the schedule and we're playing for a playoff spot or home field advantage and we got to go to New England or New England's come to us and be like, listen, this is not going to be a cakewalk. Like these guys are going to come in and fight for four quarters and this is there's no way in hell this is going to be an easy game for us so that's that's what i'm looking forward to i think that we have those types of guys the young guys we're going to look to to continue to grow and obviously for drake to can you know play well i mean that's what people want to see right that's why he was drafted where he was yeah look and one thing you see it on defense i mean yeah. look even though even though they gave up some gash plays right they played a mix in a couple plays to mix in yeah a couple of peers like when you, all of a sudden you see like Taki Taki or some of these guys just come fly, I mean, some yeah. of the hits, some of the, some of the play up front, if they can get that consistent, right? Because I think I think they're pretty solid at all three levels. Again, I, I love those the safeties with Duggar and Mapu. I mean, yeah. I know Mapu's kind of filling in, and but man, I mean, he shows up when yep. you're watching from he he flashes. I mean, there's there's guys that flash. Now you got to have it consistent. The bigger issue is you've had six different offensive line combinations for every. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, yeah, I think uh, I think we're going for the record here. Yeah, I think there's like 11 changes here, so 14 was the record. I guarantee we're going to get there. So it's that's hard. I mean, you yeah. have guys, you know, out of necessity moving, you know, from tackle to guard. You right now, you just brought up somebody from I think the Packers practice squad at center to back up yeah. a center who's making his first start with Drake. Yeah, I mean, this look. That's one thing about this game here. You're playing a team with two monsters on the edges. Yeah. I mean, Trayvon Walker and Josh Hines Allen are real. Those are real dudes. Yeah. Right. You know, but at the same time, if you can protect the Jags, I, I sat there and watched them. They knew going into the game they had to stop the explosive plays and they had to stop the plays in between the numbers. And Caleb Williams carved them up. Yeah. It was like <laughs> you knew it. You knew the game plan and you still allowed it to happen. Yeah. So so there could be some things in this game. Like you, you saw how he, he used the tight ends. 
Yep. How, how he used, you know, uh, Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper last week. That's going to be there. Yep. You know, if that's how you have to work it, that's fine. Because the one thing I really liked about watching Drake May, Chris, is usually with these young quarterbacks, it's quick game, quick game, screens, hitches, get it out. He went quick game to intermediate. Again, there weren't that many shot plays. But the way he was working through progressions as the game went along, mm-hmm. even even though he would had a lot of garbage around him in the pocket, you know. He it, stood it, in there. I'll give him that. He absolutely yeah. stood in there. And he's not afraid to look over the middle, which you can see with some of these younger quarterbacks. A lot of it is outside the numbers, try to keep it away. He was not afraid to throw it over no. the middle and see that. And, and I think a big part of that is going to be our tight end. So I would look to Hooper – you know, those guys get, you know, pop involved, you know, in the middle of the field. All those, all those, those guys that we look to, those key guys that can A, be reliable and B, get a little bit of, you know, yak and, and maybe have the capabilities of making some big plays. So, um, listen, the, the, the guys are there that can make some plays. Um, I think Ben Pelt is going to have to continue to be creative. Yep. And, and, you know, like for this game, like you said, you know, we're going to need, a, you know, an extra, you know, blocker on the edge and, you know, make sure that our, our backs are chipped in and, and being held accountable to that. I mean, we've done some things I, I saw, you know, two weeks ago and we, we had a couple of receivers circling back and being yeah. a blocker, right? So those are like different things that you could do to try to get a shot play down the field or something over the middle. So, um, you know, I would look for him to continue to kind of progress this offense. I don't think we really have an identity, right? And there's real no identity for this offense. It's with Ramondre in, you know that we're going to be able to hopefully run the ball decent and, and be somewhat effective there. And then there really hasn't been too much of a play action just because we really haven't been able to block it up. But again, you know, these are things that Drake is going to have to learn on the fly, make quick decisions and good ones, right? Because we're going to have to turn the ball over and, and continue to you know, move the ball down the field, take some time off the clock, and obviously, and hopefully, put some points on the board. Would be big for us. Yeah, I, I'd love, I'd love to see how they play if they get a lead early. Yeah, I mean, they, they fell behind so quickly. You know, Drake May, you know, fell behind so quickly against Houston that, you know, even though it was creative play design and whatnot, they were still playing catch up. If they get a lead yep. early, I, I'm real interested because I think this defense will be even more aggressive than it is, mm-hmm. not quite as reactionary, and and I think you might be able to take some chances with Drake. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun to see. Well, Steve, thank you so much for for joining us this morning. Uh, what time is it over there? It is actually, let's see, it is two forty eight in London. Okay, and it's a nice yeah. afternoon. The sun is shining. Oh, great! Well, I hope you get to uh, see some of the uh, the sights over there. Get your fish and chips, your pie, <laughs> or whatever you need to do. Uh, looking forward to a good game on Sunday. You got it, Chris. Thanks for having me. Thank you.